Hello and welcome to Gary's Scaries. So, I knew that I was not going to have a video to post this Tuesday because I was going to be over at the house that I grew up in, but I was going to come back with this surprise. I've got a new episode for Haunted Childhood Home. I am heading over to the house that I grew up in and I'm going to return with an all new episode for Haunted Childhood Home. Well, that didn't happen either. <laughs> I just, I have to share this with you. It's unbelievable. Um, and then we'll move on into something else. So a bunch of us were meeting at that house to celebrate my nephew's daughter's first birthday. And I got up early in the morning, hit the road. I never get out of here that early. I'm always, have always been later in the day. But I didn't think to even check the pass because... I don't know, it was April and snow didn't cross my mind. Oh my God. I'm not doing this. Oh my God, my car is just slipping. My tires are not working well. Oh my God, my car wants to die. Oh my God but I wasn't even to the pass and there was snow everywhere. You couldn't see the road. There were cars in the ditch everywhere. So I finally got to this exit and I turned around, but as I was turning around, I thought I'd check the pass further up on the, the cameras and see if it was any better. And no, it wasn't of course. And then they closed the pass. I drove back home and then a few hours later, I checked the pass again and it looked like it was getting better. So a little while later, it was open again and it was only traction tires advised. So I hit the road again. This cannot be the same road that I was on earlier today. I got over there, I missed the party. <laughs> and that night, uh, my nephew's father-in-law, he started getting really sick. And he has this congestive heart problem uh, that he just said that's what it was and he didn't want to go to the hospital because he knew what it was. Um, but then later on, he actually asked my brother to take him to the hospital and it turned out to be pneumonia. So that second night there, my brother's dog started going crazy and trying to scratch her way into my bedroom. You're such a dog. Dad, Susie's freaking out. And while she was doing this, we had a messenger come upstairs to tell us this. Brooklyn just puked everywhere. Yes, the one-year-old who just had a party the day before was vomiting. And I'm not talking just a little bit. She kept vomiting. It was scary. And so my brother started making jokes about it's the ghost, it's the ghost. Yeah, everything's happening at or once. Dead. <laughs> I, don't know. I, got I just got Jay, chills. Jay, go live. Jay, Hello. Live. <laughs> but we found out that one of the kids who came to the party had this stomach thing and well, basically passed it around to all the kids. So that night I slept out in my nephew's trailer. This, he always, he takes this trailer with him wherever he goes to different jobs. And so I thought, Hey, I'm going to sleep out in there, get away from all the sickness. And I was out there and it was 25 degrees and I didn't know how to turn on the heat or anything out there. So I had all my clothes piled up on top of me <laughs> and shivered. And I tried doing a little investigation out there. I thought that might be kind of cool in the trailer. It's so freaking cold. Um, I've got a candle. <laughs> yeah, why don't we do a little bit of an investigation to see if my nephew's trailer is haunted. If there's anybody in this trailer with me, could you please turn that flashlight off? If there's anybody in this trailer with me, please turn that flashlight off. But it was just too darn cold and I had made up my mind that come daylight, I was leaving. The next morning comes around and a lot of other people are starting to get sick. The adults are getting sick now and vomiting. I hit the road, got out of there, but just as I was getting on the freeway, my car started to overheat. But I was not going back to the house. <laughs> I checked the coolant, it was low, so I put more in. The 
the gauge seemed to be fine. It was cool. So I kept going and I did great. The car did fine until about 20 minutes from home when it started going. <sighs> <laughs> but the heat gauge was still fine. So I thought, oh, I'm almost home. I just got to get home. And as I thought that, ba-boom, my car exploded. <laughs> I was engulfed in this huge cloud of smoke and it was coming in through the vents and I couldn't see. And finally, when it cleared and I pulled over to the side of the road, I was in a horrible place where it was just coming around this corner and there was barely any room for me to get over. So every car and semi looked like they were coming right at you. So I stood on the passenger side, um, pretended to be on my phone while I was waiting for a tow truck and for Kevin to come get me. And I was pretending to be on my phone so it didn't look like I was standing over there peeing. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just panicking. And I was watching every car and semi. And if it looked like they were going to miss that corner, I was going to dart off into the woods. <laughs> It was the scariest. I felt so unsafe. But anyway, I made it home. The car made it later. And I still didn't have a video to bring home to play for you. So I thought I would tell you that story and then follow it up with uh, some of the most meaningful moments that have happened over there. Some of the stories that I've told that kind of choked me up and uh, sometimes I had to shoot them twice, but, um, they're the ones that really stick with me. That's what's coming up next. And I think that's all except my spirit of choice tonight while talking about spirits that I've talked about in the past is a watermelon vodka. And I'm drinking it from a London shot glass that one of my nephews got for me while he was on a job over there. Thanks Gunner. Cheers. My mother passed away when I was 25, and actually, she even passed away before that. She had asthma, and she would have some really bad attacks occasionally. I was working on the Oregon coast in a kite shop, but there was this one day when it was really slow, and all I could think of was, call your mother and tell her you love her. So I picked up the phone, and I called the house. and there was no answer. I immediately started shaking. I knew that something had happened. I just felt it in my gut. I can't explain how I knew. I just knew. Pretty soon I got a call back from my dad. Hey Gary, I'm trying on your house phone, whether it works or not. I got the same message on this as on your other, you know, leave me a message thing. And he said, Gary, we almost lost your mother. She had passed away, but they brought her back. But then as time progressed, my mom started confiding in me with some strange things that she was dealing with. One of those was not feeling like she was in her body anymore, like she was disconnected somehow. She would get these visits by sparkly things around her that would circle around her. And there were times I would walk in on her and catch her talking to these things and being very frustrated with them and telling them to go away. There was this one day I came to their house to visit and I was driving down the driveway when I saw my mom run out of the front door and across the yard. She took me up into the kitchen where I saw all of this popcorn and popcorn kernels all over the kitchen floor. She was at the house alone making her mother's recipe for popcorn balls when from behind her, she heard somebody call her name. Dixie. She turned around and she saw her mother who had passed away a few years before this and herself standing behind her. 
and she was so relieved to hear her doctor tell her, you're not crazy. I hear this stuff all the time from people who have passed, who've been brought back. We were at my grandmother's, my dad's mother, and my mom sat with me out in their motor home. And she told me, Gary, this asthma is going to kill me. Sure enough, three months later, she had another asthma attack. I knew again before even being told. But this time she had gone too long without oxygen and it put her into a coma. So three days later, she passed away again. And this time she wouldn't be coming back. Actually, about a year later, I was sitting with my dad in the living room, looking towards the stairs that go up to, the, to my bedroom. And he said, Gary, I saw your mom walking up those stairs. I was like, what? He said, just recently. And then he said, Gary, I'm not shitting you. And for my dad to say that, I knew he was telling me the truth. My dad ended up getting cancer and he passed away in 2014. I had edited together a video for his memorial that included this ABBA song, uh, Chikatita. It's, it was one of his favorite songs he would sing all the time. So on the two year anniversary of his memorial, I was over at their house. I was unloading some things out of his truck. And all of a sudden I heard the beginning of Chikatita playing. I was, like, I was freaked out. I was like, where is that coming from? And I realized my phone had turned on by itself. I hadn't even been playing iTunes or anything. It started playing that song on its own. Now, my first instinct was to run into the house and I stopped myself. I went back, I sat on the back end of his truck and I said, dad, if you're here, I'm just gonna sit here with you for a while. And I listened to the song all the way through. I hadn't listened to it since his memorial two years before. Then, a couple days later, I get back to my house and I'm sitting downstairs and thinking about what had happened when all of a sudden I felt like something was in the room with me. The only thing I could think of to do was to start recording on, on my phone. And I don't even know what told me to do that, but I just, I hit record and I sat there quietly for a while. When I played it back, I heard this. Now, I don't know what you hear, but I hear ABBA. Almost as if somebody was saying, this really happened. It was a Thanksgiving when my mom had already passed, but my dad was still around. When in the basement on top of the TV down there, <laughs> there sat a VHS tape with writing on the spine in my mom's handwriting that said Thanksgiving 1997. She had passed away that following February of 98. When I asked my dad where it came from, he had no clue. It just felt again like one of those things that was meant to be, like it was placed there. And so I put it on and I watched the whole thing. And it was the first time I actually sat and watched video of my mother since she had passed. I felt like I had hung out with her on a holiday again. When we first moved into the house, my bedroom and the entire upstairs had yet to be completed. So I shared a room with my brother for a while and this room kind of became the playroom. Uh, there was no carpet on the floor. There were no doors on the closets, just this beam in between them and you could go around. So there were many times that I turned this room into a roller rink. I wanted to make a video where I interviewed myself. So 
I had my cassette deck and I recorded all the questions I was going to ask. And then I left space in between enough time for me to answer. One of the questions, I don't remember what it was exactly, but it was a yes or no answer. So when I played the tape back, I heard this deep no. I rushed that tape down to my mother. I played it for her. And she just kind of giggled and said, Gary, how did you do that? Finally, it dawned on her that I couldn't have done this because that voice was way too deep and my voice hadn't changed yet. Before I even knew what EVPs were, I had already captured one. So right up here in that window there is where the kitchen is. My mom loved to cook. She spent a lot of time in the kitchen. Whenever I came to the house, I would always see her in that window. One of my nephews and I, we were in the kitchen cooking and we were talking about my mom, his grandma. We were standing by the oven when the overhead fan turned on by itself. Now look at this thing. You really have to push down on these metal switches for it to turn on. So when it turned on, my nephew and I kind of went silent and then we looked at each other and I just reached up and I turned it off. But it really felt like my mom was saying, I hear you talking about me. I had gone to the house with my dog, Tabitha, and we were sitting in the basement. I was doing some writing, I think, and I, thought I saw this person out the window. So I got up and I walked towards the window to take a look and nobody was out there. That's when I heard something with claws running up beside me. Of course, I thought it was Tabitha. So I looked down to say something to her and she wasn't there. She was still on the couch behind me. What was beside me, you couldn't see, but the carpet design was moving. So it was like there was something there that you were seeing through and its movements were making the carpet look like it was moving. This scent chills up my spine like nothing I had ever experienced before. I turned around to run back to the couch to where Tabitha was and time slowed down. It was like I was running through mud trying to get away from this thing until finally it's like I broke free and then I was back there with her and I grabbed her and we left the basement. It was a few years since my mother had passed when my dad finally decided that we should do her ashes over at the Oregon coast. And it was a couple of nights before that, that she came to me and we had a long discussion. The only way I could describe this is by saying that I had a dream where she came to me, but it felt nothing like a dream. It was very real. She was in front of me, but in a light type of form. And you could kind of see her face in it, but not quite. Yet I knew who I was talking to. And what makes this even more real to me is the fact that when she said she had to go and I tried to keep the conversation going, she was very adamant about having to leave. And as soon as she did so, as soon as that light kind of backed away and faded out, the alarm clock went off. I got up, I went out to the living room and I sat down and I wrote out our entire conversation and I folded it up and I put it in the coffee table drawer. And I haven't taken that out since. That, that's something I should probably do. My grandma on my mother's side, I remember as a kid, she always said that 80 was going to be enough for her. And when she got cancer, she was 79. And I remember the day she turned 80. And although she wasn't saying much or doing much at that time, um, just knowing that she was okay checking out at 80 and that's what was happening, it made it a little bit better. I know it's, it's never easy, but just that memory of what she had said, it, it did help a little bit. Before she passed, she would talk about people who had passed already coming into the bedroom. And you'd catch her reaching out and she'd say that she was reaching for this light in the room. My grandparents on my dad's side had lost a daughter very young in life. And my grandfather passed back in the 1980s. Uh, he and my grandmother, they had a few years in between them. He was a bit older than her. He 
passed of cancer, and he was in a, a bed in the living room for a long time. And right before he passed, he kept telling my grandmother that somebody was knocking at the door. This was after a period of time when he wasn't talking much at all. He mainly just slept. She told him, there's nobody at the door, but he insisted that somebody was. And later that day, he passed. I remember being over at my grandma's sister's house, and my grandma and my dad were out in the garage talking, and I was just kind of hanging out in the background, um, eavesdropping on the <laughs> conversation. And I remember my grandma telling my dad, you know, your dad has come to me before. She said that, he came to her in the middle of the night with their daughter who had passed, and he asked her if she would come with them. And my grandma said, no, she wasn't ready yet, and then he left. When she eventually did pass, it, it helped remembering that and knowing that my grandpa was probably right there. She went probably the way that all of us would like to go. She just went to take a nap one day and she didn't wake up. I'm not 100% behind the fact that these could be ghosts or spirits. And I just feel like there's so much going on around us that we can't see, that, that our limited senses that we have can't pick up on. And that sixth sense that you hear about, I truly believe that it exists because I've felt it and it's right here.